Hello there everyone. Today's video is going to be about basic macrame knots and how to take those knots to the next step by putting them together in different ways to achieve completely different results but just by using the same basic knots. So if you want to learn a bit more about basic macrame then keep watching. So then what I'm going to be doing is taking you through one knot at a time and then show you how to make that knot, the different variations you can make of the same knot and then also how to put some of your knots together. And the first knot that we're going to start out with is the lax head knot. And this knot is most often used for when you're starting out a project or when you want to add new cord into a project that you're already working on. So what I already have here is a piece of cord attached to my board and that's the one I'm just going to be making my knots onto. So to make the knot I'm just going to get on my piece of cord that I'm going to demonstrate with and this is just one length and then what we need to do for the lax head knot is fold this so you have a bit of a loop here and we're going to use that loop to create the lax head knot so I'm going to take that and put it underneath the holding cord that's already on my board and then we have that loop up here we're going to come back around with that put your fingers through the loop grab your end tails there and pull them through and then you have this that look a bit like a pretzel shape and this is basically your lax head knot when we tighten it up so you just want to tighten it and then you have a cord here attached that you can then start working with. So this is basically the lax head knot and as you can see you kind of have two loops on the side and then your two ends of your cord coming through the middle of those loops. So this is one way that your knot can look where we took the loop of the cord there and went underneath from the bottom of that holding cord and then back over the top. This is personally my favourite one because it looks a bit the most neutral basically but there's also another way that you can do it to get a different look and that is simply by taking your cord again and putting your loop in there so just folding it over and then instead of coming from the bottom we're going to go down from the top lift up the holding cord and then bring it underneath so we have it like this and then the same principle we take the loop back around towards the tails over that holding cord and put the fingers through and then pull, pull the tails through that loop and then we bring the cords down here and then when we tighten it you'll be able to see that this knot actually looks a bit different. So instead of having your two tails coming out between the two loops on the cord and it being quite neutral, what you'll be able to see here is that we kind of have a loop going across the two tails that we have and that's how that looks. So it's the, basically the exact same knot, it just looks a little bit different and if you actually flip this over so if you just take your tails towards the top, you'll be able to see that that looks like the first one I showed you. So it's the exact same knot, it just really depends on personal preference which you look you like to have for your piece. Now I personally tend to use the first one I showed you the most, just because it looks the nicest I think, and it's a bit more neutral than this one. But both variations have the exact same purpose. So what I'm just going to do is redo the first knot again, so we can then move on to the next step. So I make my loop bring it from below the cord and then underneath take it back around and then pull your tails through and then you get your pretzel shape and then when you tighten it you have your lax head knot. So another variation of this is the lax head knot with half hitches so what we have here is that the basic lax head knot and we're going to be using this then split up your ends there, your tails so what we're going to be doing with this is add a half hitch on each side of this. So what you'll be able to see is that your tails that are coming from the knot there are naturally coming out towards each their own side. So you just want to stick with that side that they're coming out to and then work with one at a time. So I'm just going to take my left one first. So we just work with this length of cord now. And then what I'm going to do is bring it back over the top of my holding cord like this. And then take it back underneath and then up through the loop. So it looks like this. So we're coming from the knot, going over your cord, back underneath the holding cord, and up through the loop. Remember to come up through the loop because that's what creates the knot. And then tighten that. And that's going to sit on the one side of your knot there. And then we need to do the same with the other one here. So the one on the right side, bring it over on the right side of your knot there, over that holding cord back underneath it and then up through the loop. So the same thing just on the other side and then when we tighten that 
we have a half hitch on each side of a knot there. So this basically has the same purpose and effect as the lax head knot itself. The only difference is we added a few more knots to it, so the knot itself kind of takes up a bit more space. And that is actually the reason why sometimes you want to use this knot over the normal lax head knot. So this was then the lax head knot that I've just gone through. Now we need to move on to the next knot. So the next knot that I'm going to go through is the square knot. So to do that, again I'm going to need my piece of cord here, and now before we can make the actual square knot, I just need to attach my cords to that holding cord so we get them into position, and I'm going to do that by using the knots that we just learned, so the lax head knot. So I'm going to take it from the bottom, pull my ends through, and then tighten that. Now this one cord is not going to be quite enough, so I need to attach another one. And then I can also show you what it looks like in different colours. So the same way, lax head knot from the bottom and pull the ends through. And then I tighten that and I'm just going to place that right next to the other one. So we have the two cords, just like this, ready for the square knot. So now that I have both of my cords attached, we've now ended up with four pieces of cord that we can work with, so four lengths here, two of each colour. Now you don't have to have this, these two in the middle are going to be my holding cords, we're going to make the knots around. You can also easily do that with one, or even more as well, this is just to demonstrate with. But then we're going to use the two outer ones here to actually make the knot. So again you can do this in a couple of different ways, but where you're going to actually end up with the same result. So it doesn't matter how you do it, but I'm just going to show you both ways here. So I'm going to take my left one first, and I'm going to bring that over my holding cords there, so you get a bit that looks like a four. And then I'm going to take the other one here, down over that one on the side, and then we need to go underneath everything in the middle. So underneath the one you just put over and then your holding cords as well. Push it up and then come out through the first loop that you made on this side. And then you end up with something like this. And then we pull that tight, just like that. And then that's one half of the square knot. So we need to finish it off. So I'm going to start from the other side now. So in this case, I'm using two different colors. You can tell I'm all, always starting with the same color. So I'm going to take from the right side, go over, and then the left side, over that one, and underneath everything in the middle, and up through the loop. So you end up with this again. And then pull that tight. And then that is your one full square knot. So this is the one way that you can do it, and then I'm just going to show you the other way as well. So I'm now back to having my cord set up like this, just with the two lax head knots. So we have our four lengths of cord, two working ones, and then the two holding cords again. So to make the other variation of the square knot, all we do is simply start with the other side. So in this case, I'm taking my right side, so the cord from the right side over the two holding cords in the middle, and then from the left one, I bring that down over that, and then underneath everything in the middle, and up through the loop. So as you can see here, we end up with the same thing. The cords are just kind of looping around in a different way, but then we tighten it. And then again, remember we're starting with the same color every time, just because I'm using two different colors now. So just start with the opposite one when you make the other half of your square knot, so my left one and then take the right one over that, underneath everything in the middle, and up through the loop. And then you tighten that and you have your one full square knot. So in most cases, it doesn't matter which side you start with, unless the pattern that you're doing calls for a specific side that you need to start from, but otherwise you can start from whichever side that comes natural to you. So because I naturally tend to start from my left side, I'm just gonna go back to make a square knot starting from that side, and then I'll show you the next one. So I've now done my first knot again, just like I showed you the first time. So what I'm going to do now is make a few more. So I take my left one over the holding cord, my right one goes over that, underneath everything in the middle, and up through the loop. And tighten that, and that's the first half of your square knot. And then the opposite side, and then tighten that, and then that's another full square knot. So now I have two. So we can keep going like this, and then we'll get knots underneath each other. And then what that will form is something called a senet. So basically what that means is you have a row of knots 
right next to each other, or underneath each other in this case. So there I have three. So you can add however many you want to this. And this specific with the square knot, you'll often find in macrame bracelets, and even the Shambhala bracelets as well. That's what's commonly used for that. But then you get in your row of knots there, we can also call it a chain of knots, and that's what makes, that's what makes up your senate. So now I want to show you what you can also do with this, and that's a square knot button, or a berry knot. So what we need to do is make some more square knots. So again, I start out by making the first one here. The first half of it. But then what we need to do, instead of pulling it completely tight, we need to leave a bit of a gap there. So you have two little spaces, one on each side of your holding cords. What you can also do is put some pins in there, because the pins, if you put one on each side of the holding cords, they will act like a stopper, so your cord here, what you're not, will only be able to tighten so far. But I'm going to leave it at that, so we have those gaps, and then make the other half of the square knot the exact same way, because that other half of the square knot will now tighten up the first half as well. So tighten that, making sure that those gaps are still there. And then what we just need to do is make a few more. Now you need to make a minimum of about three, I would say. And then you can always do a few more. It also depends what materials that you're using. And obviously how big of the knot that you want to be. So just make a few here. But like I said, I'm going to do a minimum of three. I'm probably going to do four, just so you can see the effect. So keep making your center of square knots here. the third one. I'm going to do one more. And now you can also really start to see the effect of using the two different colours there as well. One colour tends to stay on the outside and then the other colour will run through the middle of your knots there. So that's four full square knots now. So then what I'm going to do is release my two holding cords here. So these two that we're making our knots on and then just take one at a time. Now again you'll see one comes naturally to one side so just take the one that's to your left side and then we need to put the end of this through the loop that we've left on that left side of your holding cords up here. So just put that through and then come back out the other side like that and then the other side we need to put that holding cord through that gap that we left and just grab it and pull it through. And then what will happen when we pull these tight, this center of knots that we just made will kind of fold around and become a little button knot like that. And you can place your holding cords back in to keep it nice and tight. And then to lock this in place, we just need to use the working cords again to then make another square knot. So we just do that the exact same way I start from the same side again, bring that over, take the other side over that, underneath everything in the middle, and up through the loop. And then when we tighten this, we just need to make sure that this stays below that button knot that we just made. And then when we tighten that, that's going to secure that knot nicely in place now. Finish it off with the other side. So just like this. And there, you can even take it off the board now as well, and it'll be nice and secure. So this can give a nice little feature. You basically have your center of square knots rolled up to create this button knot. And then you can keep going like this. You can make more of your button knots if you want to, and you can make them right underneath each other, so you get this kind of textured look to whatever you're making. Now these knots you can use for many different things. They add a bit extra decoration. So that's how you make the button knot. So the next variation of this is the alternating square knot. And then what I've done is I just added an extra length of my cord using the basic lax head knot again. So I've now got three pieces of cords attached that I've then turned in to six lengths that we're going to be working with. So what we need to do is we need to split up our cords because as I said we have six lengths here. Now you can work with more or less, this is just to demonstrate with. You can easily use quite a few more, you're just going to be building more rows. But since I have six here, I'm going to split them into two groups where there's three in each. And then just to begin with, focus on one group at a time. So we have these three, and like I said when we did the square knot, we don't have to have two holding cords, we can just have one. So I'm going to take the very middle one of that group of three there, 
and use that as the holding cord and the other two I'm going to make my square knot with. So again we're just using the basic square knot here like I showed you before and like I said I start from my left side you can quite easily start from the other side it doesn't matter at all and then bring the first one over the other one goes over that underneath everything in the middle and up through the loop so it looks just like it did before and then we tighten that that's the first half the other half bring the other one over and then over that underneath everything in the middle and up through the loop and tighten and then we have the first full square knot so that's this first section of three then I'm going to move to the other one so we've just done the one square knot and we're going to do the same with these so again take your middle one use as your holding cord and then we just do a square knot again with the two working cords in the exact same way and we're just doing one square knot on each here because then this is the point when you've done these two that we then need to do the alternating one so release your holding cords and then we just need to look at all the cords where we have them so as you might be able to tell we have two on the outside here going to each their own side and we have two, they were the holding cords and they're kind of coming straight down and then we have the two in the middle here that are kind of crossing in towards each other towards the middle and now in my case these are the two green ones just because I'm using two different colours but obviously they can also be the same colour but those are the ones that are now going to be the holding cord so I take them bring them down and then what we're going to use as the working cords are the two that were the holding cords before so that's why it's called the alternating the holding cords and the working cords kind of keep swapping jobs so again I'm going to take my left one bring my right one over and then underneath everything in the middle and up through the loop to create the alternating square knot and then finish it off by doing the other side of it so just like this and then that's your first alternating one so to then do the next step we release these two holding cords and then we go back to the ones that were the work holding cords before and those are the two that were just the working cords I'm going to reattach them to make it easier to work with and then we just want to make our square knots again on the outside so like the very first ones we did so that means the two in the middle here in my case the green ones the ones that were just the holding cords they now become the working cords again and then including the very outside ones as well so just start with one side at a time and then do your square knot just around that one holding cord and then tighten that and the other half of it and then tighten that as well and then there you have the first one on the next row and then what you'll notice is you have a little gap there and that's kind of what we achieve by doing this alternating square knot and then the same on the other side as well just like the first row we take the first one over and then the other one to make a square knot the basic square knot and then tighten that up there do the other half of it to then kind of seal it in place and then when you do that you'll see that little gap or loop that you have there now one on each side so then you just want to continue like this release your holding cords swap them over so now the two working cords that are facing in the middle there they now become the holding cords and then the two that were your holding cord right there in the previous ones they now become your working cords so you just keep doing this and there's also many variations that you can do with this on itself this is quite tight what I'm doing here I'm having the knots sit right underneath each other as far as they will go you can also make it quite loose it'll give a nice open weave as well and like I said you can also easily add more rows so you get a much wider piece and also there's ways you can add beads into this so this is just a basic way to do it so you just want to keep going like this and then this is your alternating square knot so the next thing that we can do with our square knot is the pico knot so again I'm back to my two lengths of cord that I've attached here so what I'm going to do is use the two of them again in the middle there as my holding cords and just to demonstrate with so what we need to do first is just, I'm just going to do a simple square knot again so just the basic square knot that we've just been going through 
and tighten that because what we are going to be doing it's a bit like the alternating one as well you'll find that you have your loops and also with a button knot as well we created them little gaps in between the square knots that's what we're going to be doing again but then using them for something different so I just got a couple of square knots there now so then to create our pico what we need to do is another square knot but then like in the button knot we need to make sure it doesn't tighten all the way up underneath the other one we need to leave them little loops now how large you want the loops to be it's completely up to you it can be different sizes for different purposes and again as well you can put pins in there just to have something to leverage against and you can also if you want to measure the size of those loops if you want an even look depending on what you're doing so I'm just going to do another one to make it nice and secure you can also just do one square knot that's fine but then once we have this what we're going to do with these loops is actually I'm going to grab my holding cords grab onto my square knots there on the bottom and then push it up and then we end up with these and these are actually your picos so what we can do is continue making that so you can either push one up at a time and then make some more knots or you can just keep it down and then make a whole bunch of these where you have your gaps there maybe also to make sure they get a bit more even and then once you have a few gaps you can push them all up at the same time so this again is used for different things it gives it can give a bit of a fringe look as well so I'm just making another one here just to show you two stacked on, on top of each other so again grab your holding cords push on the bottom square knots push that up you have your first P code and the next one as well so that's how you make these so the next knot that we're going to go through is the spiral knot or also known as a half knot and again I've just got two cords here attached with my lax head knot that we learned at the beginning. So this is going to remind you a little bit about the square knot that we just learned because in the square knot we took one side first, went over and then we did the other side after and then that completed the full square knot. In this we're going to do something similar to begin with. So again I'm just going to start with my left side. Again you can start with the other side, it doesn't matter at all. Same principle as the square knot. Start with my left side, bring the right one over that underneath everything in the middle and up through the loop. So as you can see we start in the exact same way as the square knot. I'm going to tighten that and then in the square knot what we'll do now is start with the other side. That's not what we're going to do here. We're just going to continue using the same side because that's what with the square knot that's how we achieved the flat look because this is going to turn into the spiral knot. We're going to keep using the same side over and over again and then what you'll be able to see is that your knot is actually starting to twist. So eventually when you've made a few you're going to have to then just swap over your working cords there. It's going to be a bit easier to work with because it's actually twisting there. And then just keep doing the same thing. You can just start from the same side making half of your square knot basically. and starting that with the same side every time. So just continuing like this. And that's how you then achieve that spiral knot. And again that can be quite nice for certain things design wise. Give a completely different effect and texture than using the square knot. So you can really start to see the twist now. And again I have to swap them around. So that you just keep going like this and that's how you then achieve the spiral knot. So the next knot that we're going to go through is the half hitch and again I've just attached two lengths of my cord here using the lax head knot and I'm just using one of each colour just because it's going to be a little bit easier to show you. So once you start moving into the half hitch area of knots I personally like to kind of hold the holding cord in my hand while I'm using the other hand for my working cord. You can also use a board or pin it down that's up to you but I just prefer holding it because there's a bit more changing and swapping around once you're using your half hitches. So what I'm going to do is just use the green one as my holding cord and the purple one as the working cord that I'm going to make the knots with. 
So what I'm going to do is bring the purple one, in my case the left one, over the green one and then bring it back around and then pull the end through. And then when you look at it like this, you get a bit of a six. So it looks like a six here. We're just looping around the green cord and coming through the loop. Make sure it comes through the loop. And then when you tighten that up there, it's nice and tight. And then that is basically your half hitch. And then from this, we can then move into the spiral half hitch. So again, I'm grabbing this as my holding cord. With this one, we keep using the green one in my case as the holding cord. And then the other one here is the working cord and I keep going in the same direction. So again, it goes over the green one, back around and through the loop, so you get your six. So that's another way to remember as well, that you need to get your six there, looping around, tighten that under the other one. So that's two now. And then if you keep going like this, you're gonna build up your knots. So around, over, back around and through the loop and tighten and then what you'll be able to start to see here is that you get like a spiral look to it so a bit like the spiral knot this is just using a half hitch and then eventually you will have to swap them over again but just keep going like this until basically your working cord is wanting to come toward the other side so you just bring it back around and then continue in the same way so over back around and through the loop like this, always going in the same direction. And then you get that nice spiral look to your knots, which can also give a really nice effect. So this is your half hitch turned into a spiral half hitch. So the next thing that we can do with this knot is the alternating half hitch. And again, I have my two lengths of cord here, just one of each color, to show you a little bit easier. So I keep, I hold them in my hands just like before, because this is going to be a little bit easier, because we're going to be swapping around now. So I start out the same way, do my first half hitch, so bring my left one over, the right one, back around, and through the loop. Now you can start with the other side, it doesn't matter. But then we tighten that up, so remember you get your six there. And then that's the first one, now for the alternating one we need to use the other cord, so in my case that's the green one, just the one on the right side. Do the same thing but the other way around, so over, the right one over the left one, back around and through the loop. And then on this side you get your reverse six and tighten that. So that's a bit of a way to remember as well. So when you take your left one over, back around and through, you get your normal six, tighten that, and when you take your right one over the left one, back around and through, you get your reverse six. And then tighten that. And then you can keep building like this. And then you get a row of alternating half hitches. And again, this can also give a really nice effect. Both with the same color as well, because you kind of get a bit of a texture to it. So you'll be able to start seeing it build up there. So you can just go for however long you want. So that's your alternating half hitch. So the next knot that we're going to have a look at is the double half hitch. The one we just did was a single half hitch. So we're now going to use that and turn it into the double half hitch. So what I have here is I've added a few more cords just to show you the way that it's very commonly used. Because it's basically very often used to build rows of knots underneath each other, both in macrame and also micro macrame. So what I'm going to do again is take the cord furthest to the left, and again, like every other knot that I've showed you, you can start from the other side, so you can start on the right side and bring that over, but it's whatever comes natural to you. I'm going to take my left one, you need to bring it over all the other cords, and then this is going to be your holding cord where all the others are one by one going to be your working cords. So to make the double half hitches, we then take the very next one, so all these are coming out underneath, and then, if you remember the half hitch, we go over the holding cord, back around, and then we come through the loop. So when you have it like this, it looks like your six. And then when you tighten this, if you want a tight row underneath, if you've already got your lats head knots there, we need to make sure that this holding cord 
is in the right direction. So I kind of tend to push it up a little bit or pull it up there. So the row that you're making now becomes nice and flush underneath the previous one. And then what we just do is do another one to get a double half hitch. And then it's just six again. So instead of just a single half hitch, we're doing a double one. So just like that, that's your first one. And we always just do one double half hitch with each card there. Moving on to the next one, always grab the very next one. Same thing, coming underneath, around your finger, through the loop. So you get your six. And then tighten that, remember to pull your holding cord up a little bit. And then around your finger and back through the loop so you get your six and then tighten that so you get nice and tight rows under each other there move on to the next one because that was a double half hitch do the same thing around your finger and through the loop and tighten and once more so you're getting your sixes all the way across so you just keep moving like this all the way to the other end Obviously you can use as many cords as you want to. So you keep moving across here, taking one cord at a time and doing one double half hitch with each of them. And then also, as you can see I'm going to start using a different colour now. You can get some nice patterns by using different colours. Into these double half hitches and making your rows like this. And by doing a double half hitch over a normal half hitch, just a single one, that second half hitch that you do, because it's basically two half hitches, it tightens the first one in place. So it's basically a bit more secure than just doing one half hitch. So just like this, this is all the way across. And then you have your full row there of knots. So then what you can do as well is you can keep building your rows and you can keep using the same holding cord because then what we can do is bring all the working cords back down again and then actually come back across the other way so building row underneath row over and over again so you just bring it back across just like that so all the others are coming underneath and you're just using opposite hands now that's why there's quite often directional changes in your double half hitches here but you get used to that over time and then this way you can see we get the reverse six because we're going the other way now so this is just something you can do with it and then build up a new row underneath here just by going the other way and then another way that you can build your rows here with your double half hitches is instead of bringing the same holding cord back across to come the other way what you can do is go back to the beginning so I'm going to go back to my left side again you can also start from the right side and keep going back to the right side but go back to the very first one on the left side here bring that one over so the same way that we did right in the first row and take the very next one coming underneath and then start doing a new row here of double half hitches so like this one double half hitch with each and then grab the very next one always make sure to grab the next one so they're not crossing over there and just build up this next row and then what you'll be able to see is that it's a little bit off from the first one but that's because we used one of the working cords from the previous row to now make a new row by being the holding cord for that so work our way all the way across with the double half hitches and I'm changing them to my other colour here we just want to get all the way to the end just like in that first row and I've reached my last one of the working cords from the previous row so like this, a double half hitch and then all we have left is the work, the holding cord sorry, from the previous row what we just want to do is bring that underneath the current holding cord and then just do a double half hitch with that as well so just treat it as if it was one of the working cords and then that finishes off that row 
So as you can see, that second one is a little bit off from the first one, but then you get a bit more of an angle on that. Because then you can also do this for a bit, come back the other way, so you get a zigzag pattern to it. So you can go back to the beginning again and start a new one, and it'll keep growing out this way. So the next one we're going to do is quite similar to the one I just showed you. What we're going to be doing is a diagonal double half hitch. So that just means that we'll be using the double half hitch again to make a row of knots, but instead of coming straight across like we just did, what we're going to be doing is coming down diagonally. So again, I take my very furthest to the left. You can start on the other side again, just like the other times. And then take the very next one underneath, and then start doing your double half hitches again. So you're getting your sixes in this case. And then now what we want to do, because we want a diagonal row, instead of having it come straight across underneath the other one, what you always got to remember is basically when you're doing your double half hitches here, where you hold your holding cord is where your row of knots is going to build up. So I want it to come down diagonally. That means I need to hold my holding cord in the direction I want my row to go. Move on to the next one. Round your finger and through the loop. And then building them up here at a diagonal angle in the direction that you're holding your holding cord in. So the same principle as you can see, we're building up a row of knots with a double half hitch, which is coming down at a different angle. So this is what you can control as well with your double half hitches by using your holding cord to basically dictate where they go. So where your row is going to build up. So keep moving on to the next working cord. They're always coming underneath. But as you can see, we're starting to see that now, the diagonal row of knots. Again, you can always use as many or as few cords as you want. This is just to demonstrate with. Almost at the end, grab the very next one and do your double half hitch. And then we reach the very last one. Finish off this row. And then you can really see that diagonal angle to the row. So just like this. And then what you can do is come back the other way and basically get a zigzag pattern. So like the other row, but just to keep like oh, the rows open in between, we have the holding cord back across all the rest, and then just start with your double half hitches again. Just changing the hands that you're using, and again using your holding cord to dictate the direction that your row is going to go in. So you can have this come down diagonally as well. So you come down like this. So that's another thing you can do, it can give some really nice effects as well. So the last knot that we're going to go through is the vertical lax head knot. And this is a bit of a variation of the double half hitch. So what I have here is this one length of cord that I've attached with the lax head knot that we learned in the beginning. And then what I'm going to do again is we're going to be doing half hitches. So I'm just going to hold them with my hands here. My right one is going to be my holding cord and the left one, the working cord. Again, it doesn't matter. This is just to demonstrate. So what I'm going to do is start out making a half hitch like I showed you before. So I'm going to bring the left one over the right one, back, around, and through the loop. So we get a six. And then tighten that. And then what we're going to do now is another one, but just the opposite way around. So we're going to go, just before we went over, now we're going to go under with the cord from the left, and then back around and through the loop. So we're still getting that six, but your cord is looping around the holding cord in the opposite direction. And then when you tighten that, you get your vertical lax head knot. And then you can keep building on this. So you can keep making vertical lax head knot after each other. So over first, back around and under. And then under, back around and back through. So that's another one. So that's two, we'll do another one, over, around, and through to get your six, tighten, and under, around, and through to get your six but looping around the other way, and then tighten. So we now have three, and we're building up a row of a vertical lax head knots there.
So as you can see, we're using the half hitch and it's kind of like the double half hitch, but instead of having both of your half hitches to create the double half hitch going in the same way, we're just going over first and then under and that creates this look. So you can see you have little loops there, kind of like when we did the original lax head knot. That's why it's called the vertical lax head knot. So if I try and show you why it's called that, go over, back around and through. And then instead of just tightening it completely, I'm just going to leave it down here and then we go under, back around and through. And then we have this. So if you remember the beginning for the lax head knot, if you don't look at this that's attached, this is what it actually looked like before we tightened that. And then if you tighten that, we have this. And then that's going to be your lax head knot. And it's just called the vertical one because we're using one cord to build them up. And you can also do the same, you can make picots like this. But then obviously that's completely up to you. So that's how you make the vertical lax head knot. So this was a bit of an overview of your basic macrame knots and then taking those knots to the next step and then putting them together in different ways to achieve different results. So I really hope that you found this useful and thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. In today's video I'm going to go through with you some of my favourite cords and threads and also what I like to use them for. And here I just have a few examples of the different ones that I'm going to be talking about. And the ones that I'm going to be going through is some satin cord here, I have a Chinese knotting cord, and then I have S-Lon, which is also the same as C-Lon, and then this is just a nylon thread. So then let's get started having a bit of a closer look at them all. So these cords are the first ones that 